Her biological parents were unable to raise her, but it was her grandmother and uncle who took her in and raised her as their daughter. Now known as mom and dad, grandma and uncle chose Catholic schools for Kelly. After graduating in 2021, she is now a freshman in college. Against all odds, she made it. And not only, not only did she make it, Kelly is a young woman other girls can aspire to become. Oh my goodness, you're gonna fall in love with Kelly, like immediately. In this final episode of our five-part mini-series with Ke LA Catholic Schools, Kelly is the cherry on top. Kelly shares with us the village of champions and cheerleaders she had along the way and offers praise and thanks to those who believed in her. Kelly communicates with ease, shows kindness and compassion, and she's articulate with her thoughts and ideas and incredibly confident. Kelly is the epitome of the amazing students who graduate each year from LA Catholic schools. If you wanna hear directly from a Catholic school alumna, this episode is for you. If you are a sucker for a good story of overcoming the odds, like me, OMG, this episode is definitely for you. If you want your child to become a young woman or man with courageous confidence and a compassionate heart, this episode has your name written all over it. Grab your tea, your coffee, your beverage of choice, and you might need a few little tissues. If you're like me and you cry at Hallmark commercials. Trust me, get a tissue. I cried tears of joy for Kelly. Enjoy this heartwarming story. Cheers. You're listening to Destination University, a podcast for college-bound teens and the parents and mentors and educators who support them. If that is you, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Welcome to our special mini-series with the LA Catholic Schools. With over 250 schools in Santa Barbara, Ventura, and Los Angeles County, it is the largest Catholic school district in the country. Today, you are in for a special, special treat as we wrap up this mini series. We are here today with Kelly Manzo, a graduate of Sacred Heart High School. As an athlete and a leader, she has taken life by storm. If you are a sucker for a good story about an underdog, this episode is for you. If you love strong and courageous young women and are trying to raise one yourself, this episode is definitely for you. Hello everyone, I'm your host, Dr. Cynthia Colon. Welcome to Destination University, where we explore extraordinary people who lived ordinary childhoods and found a pathway to college. By being here today, makes you a rock star. So congratulations and welcome. Hello, Kelly, welcome to the show. Hello, Dr. Colin, thank you for having me. Of course, of course, you can call me Dr. C as my students call me. Dr. C, uh, got it. I love it, I love that you are, you know, you just graduated literally not that long ago and you're getting ready for college, which is totally my thing. So we'll get to talking about college soon, but. I just wanna say I'm so proud of you and I'm super honored to have this opportunity to chat with you. So congratulations. Thank you, thank you, I really appreciate it. Of course, of course. Well, our listeners, if those, those of you who are watching and or listening, um, like I said, you're in for a treat and Kelly was specifically selected for this, for this interview. So we're gonna start by just asking Kelly to share with us a little bit about her journey to Catholic school, about her childhood, and how she went to Catholic school and is now a graduate. So Kelly, go ahead and share with us what you'd like. Okay, so like um, Dr. Colin said, my name is Kelly Monzo. Right now I'm 18 years old. So we're gonna rewind back to when I was born. So I was raised by my uncle and my grandma from a really young age. Both of my biological parents were unable to take care of me, which was okay, you know, everything happens for a reason. Um, I was put into the loving care of my uncle and my grandma, and luckily they did give me the opportunity to attend Catholic school. So um, I grew up in Yucaipa, California, where there was a bus system. And growing up with my grandma, you know, she always wanted to just have me in a little box, and she was scared to put me on the bus and send me to school with all the other kids. So she gave my dad or my uncle a phone call. And he was like, you know what, bring her out here, bring her to LA, we'll put her into the school system here. And luckily he actually knew um, Mr. Saborio, who was the principal at the time of St. Thomas um, Elementary School. 
So that's how I ended up getting into elementary, the elementary school there. And I remained in Catholic school throughout my kindergarten through eighth grade, then from eighth grade through my high school career at Sacred Heart. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Mr. Sabori, I know, I know him. I met him a lot yeah. when I was a principal. I was a principal at uh, St. Bernard High School years ago. And so your dad, as you call him, I'm going to refer to mm. him as your father, but your yes, father, he's dad. He's dad. I uh, love this story. And grandmother got into cahoots together and decided like what to do and how to yeah. really get you educated and give you what they felt was the best opportunity for you. Yes, my dad actually also attended St. Thomas the Apostle School, which is where I went. And then from there, he also went to Loyola High School. So kind of stayed within um, the archdiocese in a sense. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you're like a legacy of Catholic yeah. <laughs> A little bit. So you're at school at St. Thomas the Apostle and then go, you go on to Sacred Heart. But so share with us, clearly you've learned life lessons from uh, grandma, uncle, mom, dad. Um, yeah. But so, I mean, you're welcome to share a couple of those lessons. I wouldn't mind knowing those. But in addition to those two people, who else were some adults in your life? Share with us who, who has influenced you over time. Honestly, as I mentioned him already, Mr. Saboro was also a great influence to me. He always had my back. You know, he was the principal at St. Thomas. And after that, he went to Sacred Heart High School. So I kind of just stuck with him throughout my educational career. So Mr. Sabora was always someone I confided in, always somebody I turned to when I needed help, when I had say a certain issue with the teacher, I would always be able to go to him. And he was always like a guide to me to help me become a better student and become a better person overall. And along with him at, Sa at um, Sacred Heart, I also met many amazing teachers. The staff at Sacred Heart is incredible and they were all very empowering to us as young women. So, but one in specific that I, I guess resonated with the most was Mr. Kinman and Mr. Nakashima, both my history and my science teacher. They were both just amazing mentors to me. Mr. Nakashima was the praise night leader, which was a club that I was a part of where he made, it was almost like church, but in a fun way. So we were able to praise God, sing songs, but he is also a life coach. So he would give talks in the middle of our you know, praise night assemblies and just kind of give life talks each praise night. We had one praise night each month and each month it had a different theme. So say February was love or March was luck, you know, stuff like that. So he would always just give incredible talks that just really kind of dig at your mind to make you see world differently. And in class, he also did things called um, thought of the days. So he'd give quotes or give, um, say stories that kind of just made you think a little bit, made you reflect. And Mr. Kinman, he was always someone that I would just go to if I was feeling stressed, if I was feeling whatever I was feeling. And both of those teachers were just always there for me throughout my educational career. And Mr. Kinman helped me a lot during the whole college process, you know, writing me letters of recommendation, helping me revise my college essays. So both were really incredible mentors that I was, you know, beyond blessed to meet throughout this, this, path that I journey at Sacred Heart so oh my goodness okay so I love this notion of you said you mentioned these praise nights and yes. other life lessons <clears throat> and I really feel like that is something that the Catholic schools do really well um, yes it's about religion and praising and, and praying and all of those things worship but there's those like you said those life lessons that yes. probably stuck with you even more than than the actual you know, readings and things like that. So that's pretty amazing. The other thing you said, I don't know if you picked up on this listeners, um, Kelly has mentioned Mr. Saborio. Just to be clear, Mr. Saborio is the principal, was the principal of both schools that she attended. Mm -hmm. And so for anyone to say they have a, a relationship with the principal, I don't think that happens too often at other schools, bigger mm -hmm. schools where the school population is much, much larger. So can you just kind of, touch on that a little bit like what did that mean and what does that look like to have a relationship why why in catholic schools is it really okay and acceptable and maybe even encouraged to go just chat it up with the principal without a doubt so um i do think that the catholic education does a great job for not necessarily minimizing their population of a school but it is like a smaller family type of feeling 
So at St. Thomas, it is technically a larger elementary school consider, um, if you take into consideration the other elementary schools in the area. But I do think that they do a really good job of kind of building that connection with their students. So you will always see the principal outside of the office, walking around, coming, you know, popping into classrooms, just making conversation, walking in. I would, I remember that they used to always do this. They would walk up and down the aisles, like in our classroom, and be like, oh, like, what are you working on? Like, what did you just learn right now? Kind of just ask you those little questions. As a child, you're completely terrified. You're like, oh my God, the principal's talking to me. Like, I need to answer this correctly. So, but those little things are what build that relationship. And knowing that you're going to see your principal outside of the office is awesome. It's not only like, hey, you're getting called into the principal office. This is the one time you're going to see him a month. No, it's more like you'll see him out on the playground. You can just say hi to him. He'll say hi to you. Sometimes they even pick up a ball and they'll play with you. Things like that. It's what builds that relationship. And that was in, in elementary school, of course. And when I went to Sacred Heart High School, Sacred Heart High School is a very small school, actually. It's an all-girls school um, in Lincoln Heights, and it's one of the smaller um, all-girls schools in um, the LA County. So going into the school, I was kind of scared. I wanted something a little bit bigger, but honestly, best choice of my life. Like I said, Sacred Heart definitely embodies the idea of familia. That's what we call it, our Sacred Heart familia. And that's what it was. Um, the teachers, the staff, everybody, it was just one big old family. And like I said, you would see Mr. Saboyo in and out of the office all the time. And just, they always have a smile on their face and you know that you can just approach them and be able to speak to them for whatever reason it was that you needed. Even if you had never spoken to them before, just being able, they, they just have a very welcoming sense. And you're able to just walk into the office and know that you're going to be listened to and you're going to be helped and guided for whatever your concern was that you brought up to him. So I think those were two very big factors that I found in the Catholic education. So oh, I just love this. Naya. Um, well, I believe, and it sounds like you do too, and, and your familia does too, that it really does take a village to raise a child and to give yes. you the support and that you need and the encouragement along the way. <clears throat> Can you, um, I don't know if you have a time in high school. High school, you know, can be very challenging. It's overwhelming, especially if you know your, your goal, your focus is to get into college. <clears throat> so there's all these pressures. Was there ever a time that you ever felt overwhelmed or just nervous or worried? And when that happened, who did you turn to? Who helped you stay focused and motivated? And maybe that was your mom and dad. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, I think like many listeners out there, it was when the coronavirus hit. So it all started off just a two week vacation an extension to our spring break. That's what it was. That's all it was. Little did we know that we were still kind of are kind of still stuck in this confusion that we're going through. So when it first started, I personally am a very hands-on learner. I love to be in the classroom. I love to be that one student that sits in the middle of the classroom, right in front of the teacher's face. You're like, you can't miss me. So being able, extracting that in-classroom, in-person um, scenario of school was really difficult for me to adjust. I went from being at school from sometimes seven o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock at night when I had practices to being home all the time. So it was really challenging for me to adjust to that and be able to still excel as a student. So I found myself in a really pretty dark spot when that happened. And the person that I turned to was Mr. Nakashima, or I would say he kind of turned to me. He reached out to me to join Praise Night. So I used to always attend Praise Nights, but I was never a Praise Night leader. So being able to be part of Praise Night is what helped me because like I said, he was a life coach. So just being able to listen to him talk and listen to him guide us during this time was what kind of helped me get through it all because I went from feeling alone to being given this group of other young women who are also in the same state as me. And we were all able to kind of collaborate with each other and to share that same Zoom type praise night feel to the school, which I thought was amazing. Although praise night wasn't the same online, um, we still tried to, we basically made, um, how would I call it, kind of like a social group almost. Every meeting that we would have, we would be given 
girls from all grades. You would get a couple freshmen, a couple sophomores, a couple juniors, a couple, a couple seniors in your group, and you would just lead discussions, kind of talk to each other, you know, how we're feeling. We'd reflect sometimes on a reading, like a gospel reading, and then talk about it, and then kind of tie that into what's going on in our lives, whether if it was finals week or just, you know, the COVID, every, the craziness that was going on around us in general. So being able to work together and being able to help our school is what helped me and kind of guided me through the whole coronavirus craziness that was going on. So, yeah. Well, what you're speaking up to is, um, and as soon as you said, you know, COVID was the big obstacle and challenge, mm -hmm. like it was so, oh, how, how can I forget? Yeah. But what you're speaking about is the need. I mean, what happens, what happened and is still partially is that we were so exposed to community and uh, mm -hmm. uh, being you know, with people. And I'm sure, especially at a girls' school and the Catholic piece, you know, you hug and love on each other, you know, all the time, you know, even in, in class, you know, you, you know, peace be with you. And, you know, there's family, familial community. Yeah. And to be removed from that, what you're saying is they still found a way to have mm -hmm. community um, in a way that teenagers in many ways need that community that you're talking about just after praise night of sharing different things and sharing how you're feeling or worries or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that's really incredible. And I think that's something that the Catholic schools do really well. Yes. Oh, so good. How lucky, you know, you were to, to have that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I hear, so, you know, again, listeners, Kelly was hand selected for this interview. So I hear that you are a leader and you were an athlete and just, you know, active. And obviously we've heard you talk about Praise Nine and your leadership there, but um, maybe share with our listeners. Um, I'm curious to know sort of what you were involved in and more than that, sort of what it, me what it meant to you, things that you learned from that, maybe things that you'll carry over into college. So, um, so I would kind of like to add that going into high school, I was always scared, like in elementary school, I wasn't very involved. I only played volleyball and that was about it. I always had dreams of, you know, being part of student government and doing all these little activities at school. But I always had like this fear in the back of my head. And so when I went to Sacred Heart High School, like I said, it was an all girls school. And at first I was kind of hesitant. I was like an all girls school, like what? But it truly helped me become the person that I am today. Sacred Heart did an amazing job to kind of really empower, not just myself but like many of the young women who have been there I'm pretty sure can say the same thing they did an incredible job of empowering us and really just pushing us to come out of our comfort zones so I was um I was in student government I was in letter women which is kind of like our it's like the sports kind of ambassadors in a way um I was part of that I was in praise night like I said and um I was also part of all of the AP and honors programs throughout my time at Sacred Heart High School. So my junior year, I was class secretary and my senior year, I became um, class president. So I think what really helped me kind of come out of my comfort zone also was just like that family sense and being able to see other girls that I surrounded myself with join these clubs and be part of these different organizations and seeing how amazing they were it kind of pushed me to also do the same. And I wanted to also, you know, be more inclined in my um, high school community because I didn't just want to be a student. I wanted to help my, you know, school by also becoming a leader and being able to help other girls in any way that I possibly could. So, yeah. Well, no doubt that um, people, the the mentors that you've talked about already at your school and Mr. Saborio and then your leadership in Praise Night, you know, mm -hmm. really catapulted you into becoming the senior class president, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. ah, so, so good. Now, um, my day job is all about college and helping kids get into college. And uh, of course I do this podcast as well, but uh, I'm excited to, to, for you to share with our listeners sort of so I'm gonna break this down in maybe two parts, um, okay. just for the sake of, uh, this is always my curiosity with any student who is going off to college. And you've already shared that you were raised not by your biological mom and dad, 
um, but by your grandmother and your uncle, who you call mom and dad. And so um, did they go to college? Did either of them attend college? Yes, my dad actually went to Cal State LA, but my grandma did not. She stopped her education. Um, she grew up in Mexico, so it's common. And she stopped her education at a really young age and chose to work instead of, you know, pursue an education, which is okay, because that's what has helped her, you know, want to see me succeed in life. So but your dad, okay, now I'm remembering you said he went to Loyola High School and then off to college. Mm -hmm. So at what point, do you, what was the earliest time that you remember that you were going to college? I mean, I imagine that was sort of not an if, but when and where you were going, right? Did, was that part of the culture of your, and your home life? You always talked about going to college or when did that happen? Um, I think that it was always an idea that I had in the back of my mind since when I was very little. I've always been a pretty good student. Uh, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I've, I've always been a really good student and I loved, you know, just expanding my knowledge, reading, writing, you know, doing math, everything like that. I have always excelled in school. And so when I was younger, I kind of always thought ahead. Like I could remember when I was in kindergarten, I would look up to the eighth graders and I'm like, wow, like one day I'm going to be like them. And then, you know, so on and so on. I would always just kind of, I had people in my life that I would see, you know, either do right or do wrong. And that would kind of tell me like, maybe I shouldn't follow that path because I did grow up in um, the Pico Union area, which is not the best area to grow up in. Not many students, sadly, you know, pursue a higher education outside of high school, if even then go to high school. So just kind of seeing, you know, not the downfall of my community, but just seeing just seeing students around my age, you know, follow different paths is what kind of helped me know that I wanted better. And I wanted to, you know, get out of that and just make something for myself. And like I said, I know I've only talked about, you know, myself being raised with my grandma and my uncle, but I also have four other brothers and two sisters. And I am the youngest of all of them. And none of them pursued a higher education. They have somehow, you know, still found a way to make their lives what they are today. They're still successful in their own ways. But I knew that I wanted to make something out of my last name. And I knew that I wanted to, you know, pursue a higher education and, you know, actually follow a career path. I'm not saying, I'm not talking down on my siblings. I think that, you know, we all face obstacles in our lives, but they are still amazing and they're still successful in their own ways. But I just knew that I wanted, you know, to choose something different since I was given this opportunity to attend Catholic school. Sadly, they were not given that opportunity. And like I said, I was the youngest and I was born with, I was premature. So I had a couple, you know, health issues when I was born, which is the reason why my uncle and my grandma did take me in. So just being given these opportunities, I knew that I had to, you know, grab hold of that and make something out of it. So that's kind of, how and why I knew that I wanted to pursue a higher education for them as like a thank you and just to show them like all you have given me in this life is you know being in turn to something beautiful so well and, and you said something too about you know you're you were given the opportunity to be in a catholic school and mm -hmm. uh, all girls school and I yes. imagine that was the talk at school as well everybody else was applying and you know you mm -hmm. sort of you know you all do the same thing you 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 are a product of your community. Mm -hmm. So um, share with us a few of the colleges that you applied to or how you determine you know, the, the list and, and then share your decision where you're headed. I will say the college process is scary. It is confusing and that's totally normal. It's, it's, it's a scary process because honestly, you're deciding the school that that's gonna be your future, you know? So I, how it all started was, you know, I was stuck at home, you know, coronavirus was going on while I was applying for colleges. So I was stuck at home and I did find myself with a lot of time on my hands, which is kind of what pushed me to make a list of, and make a list and just figure out what it is that I wanted to do. Because it, it's, it's a hard choice, it really is. And I can't sugarcoat it. It's definitely a hard choice to pick a career field, you know, pick a major, pick a school, because that's where you're going to spend the next four years of your life at. 
So how I kind of went about it is I knew that I didn't want to go too far from home. Although Hawaii was on my list, it was just kind of like a fun one. It wasn't really like, yeah, I'm going to go to Hawaii because I knew I couldn't leave my family. So honestly, it's kind of just, it all depends on your roots and what it is that you want to do with your life. So I made my list. Um, it consisted of schools in California that also had my major. Um, my major was either biology or biochemistry, which most schools have. But, you know, I wanted to find a school that had a good biology program and a good biochemistry program that would, you know, help me succeed further. So I picked schools that were fairly local to where I lived and I got accepted to many of the UC schools that I wanted to go to, but something just kind of kept drawing me back, you know, home. I didn't want to leave too far. I thought Santa Barbara was too far. I thought San Diego was too far. So I did choose um, UC Riverside. I am beyond excited to be attending UC Riverside. I will be majoring in biochemistry and they have an incredible, incredible biology program with a pre-med um, field, like a pre-med track also, which is awesome. So that is what I'm gonna be doing. And it's only about like 30 minutes away from home. I am gonna be dorming on campus. So I will get, you know, that, that dorming experience, first year dorming experience, but I'll still have the opportunity to come home and see my grandma, see my dad whenever I want to without having to drive three, four hours. So honestly, it just depends on you. If you want to go far, if you want to stay home. Personally, I wanted, I it was too soon for me to go home. Maybe for my graduate school, I'll, I'll go a little further. But for me, it was a little too soon to leave my family. So yeah, that's how I ended up choosing UC Riverside. Oh, well, congratulations. I have <laughs> Thank a you. cousin who went there and I have several of my, camp, my students uh, who are headed there. So uh, great, great choice. Super proud of you. And, you know, you said you've got the pre-med track and all the things that you were looking for, proximity mm -hmm. home. It really, at the end of the day, has to be a choice that is going to fit yes. you and make you feel, feel good. Um, but I would say to everyone, listen to what she said. The college admission process is scary. It's overwhelming. It's challenging. It takes a lot of time. All mm -hmm. those things are certainly true. And that's sort of what we talk about um, with our students as well. Um, and I know what you mean by, I said I wanted to go out of state early on when I was applying to college, this was many years ago. But when it came down to it, I didn't want to go too far yeah. and I ended up choosing USC. So it was, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes from home. Yeah. But, oh gosh, I know, you're, I know your mom and dad are going to listen to this later. But <laughs> I did go away to New York for graduate school. So maybe you have- I'm telling you, maybe my grand, maybe once I get like that little ounce of kind of freedom, I'll be like, hey, this isn't too bad. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, yeah. And who doesn't want to put Hawaii on their college list? I don't know exactly. why, why more people don't put Hawaii on their, on their yeah, list. It, it was a fun, it, it was a fun one. Even though, you never know, maybe I would have done it. <laughs> yeah. Four years in Hawaii. Who doesn't want that? Yeah. All right. Well, I love that. <laughs> so you've had a lot of believers and supporters who cheered you on through your life journey and certainly in the last four years. So is there anything that you would like to say to them? I would just like to say thank you for putting up with me because sometimes I was a little bit of a roller coaster. I know it. I go through my ups and downs just like I'm pretty sure any high schooler does. When we get a little stressed, it gets a little scary. And I know parents can probably be like, yeah, my daughter gets a little, a little crazy when it's finals week or whatever. So honestly, I would just like to say, you know, thank you for being there for me. Thank you for guiding me and just overall making me the young woman that I am today. So yeah, <laughs> thank you. That's all I can say. Well, that is really sweet. And, um, and I'm sure they're going to miss you, but I know that they probably feel that they gave you all the right opportunities and putting you through Catholic school, the LA Catholic schools and Mr. Saborio and all the people that you mentioned that have had a hand in shaping who the young woman that you are today. So again, congratulations to, to everyone, to you and, and to all the people who supported you. So, all right, well, I'm gonna wrap up here, but I will say this um, to all the listeners, uh, whether you're watching or just with the audio, this is the last of a five part series for our LA Catholic schools. And I think the theme that I have clearly in my head for the entire, for an entire five 
is this. There is care, there is love, there is personal attention, there is encouragement at each of these schools. Uh, the district is large and wide. As I said, it's the largest Catholic school district in the country. If you can't find a school for you, you know, you're not looking hard enough. But I also picked up today from Kelly, look at how amazing she is. She's so articulate, she's so um, calm and, you know, communicates with ease and is so confident. And I dare say she probably wasn't that young woman, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, and then you know, she got better and she got better. And so she's become an, an incredible leader, an incredible spokesperson for her, for her high school and all of her schooling. So if that is what you're looking for for your child, <clears throat> I would say look no further, all right? Thank you so much for being with us for our five-part mini-series. I'm gonna just say our goodbyes and then we'll, Kelly, you and I will wave to, to, to our audience, okay? Hang on. Got it. Okay, listeners, thank you so much for joining this conversation. We know that you have a busy and full plate, so thank you for spending some time with us here on Destination University. If this episode has in any way fueled your confidence or helped build your dreams, please share this episode with three people in the next 30 minutes. And if you're feeling a little extra loving today, hit subscribe so you don't miss another episode. This, this also helps other listeners find us and begin their journey to Destination U University. That's all I have for you today, my dreamers. Be sure to tune in next time. Until then, wherever you are, may you have a happy and sunny day. Bye for now.